You get the best of both worlds. Chillin', I'll take it slow, then you rack up the show. I am obsessed with Hannah Montana. Was, I was obsessed with Hannah Montana. She had the life we all dreamed of. High schooler by day, superstar by night. Unfortunately for me, just the high school part is asking a lot. When I think about Hannah Montana, I think about singing her songs at the top of my lungs, Friday night sleepovers with my best friends, and waking up on Saturday mornings to watch her latest adventure. When I think about Hannah Montana, I get nostalgic. Svetlana Bohm, author of the book The Future of Nostalgia, says that nostalgia is a feeling of displacement or loss. Displacement from a time and place that you can't get back. And that anyone can experience it. With our world in upheaval, we are feeling unsettled. And we're looking back to what we perceive as simpler times, our childhoods, by viewing them through rose-tinted glasses. So, without saying your age, what is one thing you remember from your childhood that someone younger than you just wouldn't understand? Are you holding a G.I. Joe doll? Or are you picking out know, outfits for your Polly Pockets? Can you remember that tough decision between dialing up the internet or dialing up your friend? <clears throat> you lost me on that one. But today, let's dial back and explore what nostalgia is. Then we will confront how businesses are exploiting it for profit and how it's hurting our communities. Before finally realizing that nostalgia has a power to give us the best of both worlds by reconciling our past and by looking to the future. <clears throat> We've all experienced nostalgia, and past experiences are exactly the best way to describe it. Nostalgia is an emotion, because it couldn't be described physically until recently. A study at the University of Surrey in October of last year has found physical proof for nostalgia. Using MRI technology, researchers looked at the brains of participants when they were shown a photo of a place that was meaningful to them, and a photo of a place that had no real meaning. The researchers found increased activity in the amygdala and the parahippocampal when the participant saw a photo of a place that they remembered. So nostalgia really is in our heads. Science has shown that we have an automatic emotional response when shown things from our past. And any sense can trigger nostalgia. The smell. <clears throat> of Axe body spray wafting in from the boys' locker room, or the pain of a silly band snapping against your wrist, or something as simple as the opening lines to Journey's Don't Stop Believing. Nostalgia is the midnight train going anywhere, connecting our past by using our emotions. And it used to be that we could go about our daily lives and some random event would trigger a nostalgic feeling. But now, Businesses are aware that we have this automatic emotional response, <clears throat> and they're exploiting it solely for their own gain. Lauren Friedman of Forbes magazine says that in this age of impersonal digital media, creating social connectedness through nostalgia is an easy way for businesses to leverage the optimistic feelings that accompany a walk down memory lane. So businesses are creating products that remind us of our past so that they can transform their shopping aisle into our memory lane. In addition to fashion companies bringing back styles from the 80s and 90s, major companies like Netflix and Disney have jumped on the bandwagon by creating remakes and revamps of our favorite shows. If you are a Roseanne fan in the 90s, <clears throat> you may have heard, she's back. <clears throat> if Beauty and the Beast is your all-time favorite movie, there's now a live-action version, and it has Emma Watson. And if you thought Star Wars was something that was going to be left in a galaxy far, far away, <clears throat> you clearly have them in the toy aisle at Target. These products are meant to induce nostalgia, but this isn't nostalgia itself. It's simply businesses tricking us into thinking that we can buy back our childhoods. 
Christian Kuffner, president of K-Squared Strategies, a major marketing firm, says that typically we do see nostalgia marketing in unsettled times. But today, marketers are using nostalgia as a way to claim authenticity and real long-time relationships with consumers. Relationships that aren't really there. Having our nostalgia artificially produced is bringing us back to the past, making us stuck in the nostalgia, and making many of us begin to believe that things were better back then and can't get better now. When we turn on the TV and look at current events, we want nothing more than to imagine that it's Walter Cronkite telling us to have a good evening. But by only bringing back the happy days of decades past, we are putting ourselves at risk of forgetting all the things that should have been dealt with and left in the past. Things like racial discrimination, gender inequality, and a general lack of understanding for those around us. If we continue to use the past as our precedent for the future, we are allowing ourselves to be blissfully ignorant of all the things that have changed and all the things that still need to change. I was hoping to use my grandmother's generation, the World War II generation, as my example of what a positive, united, and forward-thinking American society looked like. <clears throat> However, doing so would make me a walking and talking hypocrite. While this generation achieved many great things, if we solely view them as the generation that fought the oppression of the Nazis, we are overlooking American citizens kept in Japanese internment camps. Our rose-tinted glasses go beyond our own memories to entire histories that are not seen as equal to the main narrative. <clears throat> so what can we do to not recreate, but to create a healthy balance of nostalgia in our lives and communities? It may seem ironic, but the solution comes from the past. Where does that nostalgia stem from, and what action does it provoke? The easiest way to overcome manipulative, nostalgic marketing is to take a step back and think about what memory are they trying to sell me and not buying into it. For example, if I were to go to Walmart and see Hannah Montana merchandise on sale, <clears throat> I would be, well, I would be extremely tempted to buy it all and add to, I mean, recreate the shrine to her in my room. However, the healthy way to deal with this nostalgia would be understanding that I'm just missing those middle school days and instead give my middle school friends a call. If your nostalgia is based off of a memory that you and another individual share, that is a powerful thing. Two years ago, my mom created a Pinterest board titled Good Old Times, and she began adding images of things she remembers from her childhood, like Captain Kangaroo dolls, Bob Barker from The Price is Right, and car windows you had to roll down by hand. She then began sharing these images with my grandmother, who was battling Alzheimer's. But it was never about the products themselves. The minute my Nana recognized an image and began telling a story from her life, she was back, briefly cleared from the fog of Alzheimer's. And now, when my mom looks back on that memory, <clears throat> she's not thinking about what a great company Pinterest is or that she needs these items. She's thinking that that was one of the last real conversations she had with her mom. And that's something she's going to want to keep with her forever. It's healthy nostalgia when it's about the people and not the products. Nostalgia should not be a marketing tactic, and it is not our excuse to ignore what's going on in the world today. It gives us the opportunity to see everything that's gone wrong in the past so that we can make corrections for the future. That way we can become an American society that is positive, united, and forward-thinking. An American society that doesn't need rose-tinted glasses to get the best of both worlds.